Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Terra Fugia petitions FAA for waiver of LSA limits. 2014 is a milestone year for Boeing deliveries and orders, and AirAsia accident prompts Indonesian aviation crackdown. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. Terra Fugia has petitioned the FAA to grant waivers to allow its transition rotable aircraft to exceed weight limits and stall speed requirements for an LSA. The petition asked the FAA to allow the transition to have a gross takeoff weight of 1,800 pounds and a correspondingly higher stall speed of 54 knots. This will allow the transition to incorporate the crashworthiness and other safety features while maintaining the spirit of an innovative, easy-to-fly sport aircraft. The formal petition has now been published in the Federal Register and is open for public comment. All comments must be submitted by January 20, 2015. Boeing employees helped the company set a record for the most commercial airplanes delivered in a single year at 723 in 2014, breaking the company record for a second consecutive year. The company's sales team also booked 1,432 net orders, carrying a value of $232.7 billion at list prices, breaking the previous all-time high set in 2007. Boeing's unfilled commercial orders stood at 5,789 at the end of the year, also a new company all-time high. Of the 1,432 net commercial orders Boeing booked in 2014, the next generation 737 and 737 MAX led the way with 1,104 orders, followed by the 777 and 777X, with 283 orders. All three Boeing commercial airplane production sites, which are Everett and Brenton, Washington, and North Charleston, South Carolina, set new site records for airplane deliveries. After the break, the loss of AirAsia 8501 prompts flight scheduling investigation. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The response of the Indonesian government after AirAsia Flight 8501 went down December 28th seems just a bit odd. The Indonesian government is taking action against AirAsia, but not because of the crash or possible safety issues. It's reported that AirAsia had not received the proper clearances from the government to fly on that day. The airline was authorized to fly the Surabaya Singapore route on other days, but not on Sunday, which is when the accident occurred. Officials said that Singapore had authorized the Sunday flight, but not Indonesia. In response to the accident, the Indonesian Transportation Ministry found out about the paperwork glitch and has forced the cancellation of all AirAsia flights between the two cities. It's also reported that several officials have been suspended for allowing the flight to take off and other airlines are being checked to assure compliance with flight schedule approvals. It remains to be seen if these issues had anything to do with the accident. It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. 
Aviation and aerospace had a lot of good things to report in 2014, but some things were disappointing. Jim will share his list of the most disappointing stories and topics of 2014. Here's this week's Barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, here we are again. We talked last week about the best of 2014. Let's talk about some of the things that, well, didn't distinguish themselves all that greatly last year and, frankly, give us that much more of a reason to look forward to 2015 with some hope. We, of course, speak primarily of the loss of Spaceship Two, the loss of Mike Alsbury, the injury to Pete Siebold. The road to the future is going to be paved with risk, and sometimes you've got to pay the piper. It's horrific and it's awful, but this is how progress is made. God bless them all. The FAA shakedown of EAA, there's no excuse for it. It should never have happened. It continues to happen, and whoever's responsible at the FAA should be tossed out. The UAV confusion and misdirection still promulgated by the FAA only proves to hold back an industry that has great promise, not just for this nation, but for the world. The continuing Cirrus Bravo Sierra. Well, Alan Klapmeyer has a $10 million judgment against Cirrus for the suffering that he's had to experience at their hands. A lot of other people have as well. It's not right, and I wish that company would get its act together. The Navy's treatment of Captain Greg McWhorter, shameful. There's no question that it was a bit of a witch hunt, but they went after him, and they got him. And how do you do that to a fellow who's served this country so well? We lost too many friends this past year. We started with folks like Eddie Andrini in the air show industry, and way too many accidents. We can be safer, we can do better, we must. The loss of Malaysian Air MH370, one of the greatest mysteries in recent aviation, and it's going to create a lot of problems for the future. I hope we find it. I hope we understand what happened. AOPA, still listless, still not quite sure of the mission. Something needs to be fixed there. I hope they get their act together, but right now some of the things that they're doing just don't seem to have the direction that it had six, seven years ago. We're still the subject of some god-awful journalism, both in the major media as well as within our own ranks. We can do better. We must do better. The poor marketing and salesmanship within GA and sport aviation are doing nobody any good. We've been preaching it for a while. We hope it gets better. And finally, if you're going to announce a product, build the product. The vapor plane that are out there, the Icon A5 and others that are years and years and years late. If you can't do it, keep your mouth shut until you can. That's it, folks. Let's hope that 2015 is a lot better for the Aero News Network, Airborne, and Aero TV. I'm Jim Campbell. After these messages, the FAA grants real estate and agricultural UAV waivers. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument. TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. Well, with so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA has granted additional waivers for commercial use small UAVs. One exemption is for the use of real estate photography, and the other is to permit crop scouting for precision agriculture. These are individual exemptions, not blanket approvals. Avidyne has transitioned service for all digital acquisition units and sensor interface units to the Radiant Power Corporation. Radiant Power has already been servicing these units under an agreement with Avidyne. All warranty services will now be handled by Radiant Power. The FAA recognizes that there have been an excessive amount of flight plan errors through the issuance of multiple flight plans. 
Pilots should be aware of procedures for handling flight plan changes. This information is published on the FAA flight planning website. If you're flying a Grob Work model G115EG or G120A airplane, pay attention. The FAA has just issued an airworthiness directive regarding defective starter solenoids. The AD is effective February 9th. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The Academy of Model Aeronautics sent letters to the New York City Council opposing proposed legislation to restrict unmanned aerial vehicle flights in New York City. At least one of the bills would completely ground the educational hobby of flying model aircraft within the city. AMA's Vice President Eric Williams wrote in part, quote, In restricting where model aircraft can fly, your legislation would destroy a decade-old family-oriented and community-based recreational activity, end quote. He also pointed out that, quote, your legislation runs counter to the intent of the U.S. Congress, which made clear in the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012 that model aircraft should be exempt from regulation, end quote. We at ANN realize that the reckless use of UAVs by unqualified people can be a problem. However, the New York City Council's regulation proposals result in throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We think the Council's action is just as reckless as the people it's aimed at. The AMA has a right to be concerned about what's going on, and we agree with their position. Well, we made it through our first week of Airborne Unlimited Alive. And if you're not sick of us yet, remember you can get real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next Monday.